The main purpose of this symposium is to connect satellite observation to the, what the World Climate Research Program calls the grand challenges. WCRP identifies water, ice, uh, oceans, atmosphere as their grand challenges. Um, but we can't do that in the abstract. We need observations, we need the satellites to help us. So this symposium is where we try to put the science together with the observations and build a whole piece. This conference has really been looking at, well, how do we make the most of the investments that we make in science, whether they be in observing what's happening to our planet, or whether it's about predicting what will happen to the planet in the future. And that means really that fusion of theory, observations and models, which at the end of the day is what we have to do if we're really going to provide robust, confident predictions of what our future climate might look like. And we still don't have a full understanding of, of the rate at which uh, melting uh, ice is contributing to sea level and how that will uh, change in the future. Real difficulty in getting to locations where where the cryosphere is, large ice sheets, mountain glaciers, uh, the, the high Arctic. And so space observations constitute the, the real core of our ability to observe on a large scale what the state of the cryosphere is and how it's changing. But my main focus at the moment is uh, snow cover detection from uh, space and using the satellite measurements. And uh, this is most important for the water management and the long-term changes in the snow water equivalent and snow cover. So this is what I'm dealing now at the moment. If you think about climate, really, you should just think about following the water. And in terms of atmospheric water, some of the big questions relate to the vertical profile of water in the atmosphere. It's really only through the space observations that we get the global view. It's only through the space observations that we can access all the dimensions of cloud fields. Many scientists currently are trying to figure out how the low-level clouds are going to change in a warmer climate. We have ideas that, that suggest that the, the low there might be less low-level clouds in a warmer climate. We have a um, relatively high level of confidence in our projections of changes in temperature extremes. Um, substantially lower levels of confidence in our projection of changes in precipitation extremes. So any study on extremes is really hungry for data. So we'd like it at high frequency, we'd like it to be spatially complete, we'd like it to be long term so that we can, you know, uh, and we, we want it to be of high quality in the far extremes of, of the distribution. I think we realize that satellite and climate sort of push each other, you know, they're not natural partners. Satellite group has to work a little harder, climate group has to work a little harder, so hopefully that's a good partnership for us going forward. A lot of progress has been made on the scientific aspects, but now the issue is to translate that into concrete services for decision making. Earth observations are the starting point of climate services. Um, they're very necessary to understand the past, to monitor the present, and to use that information to inform how we uh, view the future. A lot of what's being talked about this week are additional earth observations that are needed, uh, how you can get better access to those earth observations, how they can be sustained throughout time, and how we can share that data more broadly. Of course, we're all concerned about um, climate change. Uh, we are looking uh, to get information, um, how it works and how it can be prevented. We get pictures from space and we can see on these pictures what's happening on the Earth, otherwise we won't even know it. And uh, you can only change things if you know what they are. We have invested for many, many years um, in climate research, but all the data and information coming out of this is staying in a relatively small circle of knowledgeable scientists. The challenge now and the opportunity is to make that much more relevant for society, for policy makers, but also for economic operators. What I take back is a clear need to, uh, to have this link between the climate change community and the Earth observation community. And this is for us extremely important as we are dealing with a, 
operational program in Earth observation, so the well-known now uh, Copernicus. The questions that have been raised today uh, and earlier this week have typically been about, as I say, the need for integration of many different types of parameters and simultaneous observation and assimilation of those into models and secondly for the long-term continuous observations. So those are two key elements I think which will be taken across into the statements of need for future observations. We have uh, an international framework with other space agencies to take on board these requirements and to even better coordinate our respective assets uh, through the so-called virtual constellation. We can plan ahead uh, in time to see how we can better respond to the requirements which have been really very clearly expressed here. Well, the architecture for climate monitoring from space provides a framework for space agencies to coordinate to look at the end-to-end -end delivery of value from observations, through processing, through applications, and all the way to decision making. And that'll facilitate the use of that data and information for everyone, from scientists to decision makers. This uh, type of meeting had never had happened before. So this is the first time these communities are coming together and UMETSAT was absolutely instrumental in facilitating and being such a great host to make this event so successful.